You say you want to put up your antenna across a ravine. How deep is this ravine? A mile deep? You're going to need a long antenna. Hello, Wagis Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another edition of Ask Dave. Today our question comes from Richard Libby, KJ7UIP. This question's actually part of that set that got lost in 2021. So it's only, what, four years later. Sorry about that. Very interesting question. I've never heard this one before. I'm looking to put up an NFED antenna way up between two trees that happen to be both on different sides of a ravine. The ravine is a sharp, steep canyon, uh, usually caused by a river or a creek or something like that. They're common out here in the West. Sometimes we call them arroyos, which is the Spanish word for it. How do I determine what the appropriate height is given the slope on both sides? Many thanks for your videos explaining to both newbies and seasoned doggies. Okay, what he's talking about is he's got land up here and it's over here, but somehow there's a ravine down here. Ravine is a steep walled uh, canyon. And apparently this is all on his property or he owns on both sides of it anyway. And his question is how high does he need to be if he's gonna span the ravine uh, with his antenna? Well, obviously you wanna get it up as high as possible. If you've got a tree here and a tree here, then you can string across like this. Now that'll be fun because you gotta throw something with the wire down to the bottom and then from over here, crawl down, get it and take it up. Now, assuming this is not a very steep ravine, let's say 200 feet or something like that, you can easily string an antenna across it. The antenna may not go all the way across, so you'd have rope over here and wire here. You could probably easily put the uh, the 132 feet or so that it would take to get the NFED half wave to tune on 80 meters. It'll tune down around the FT8 frequency, which is 3574, okay, 3574 kilohertz. Tune it for there and all the other bands should fall in place. So the difficulty will be getting this across the ravine. Another way you can do it if you've got a strong enough drone is to attach like a piece of fishing line to the drone. Send the drone over here to your accomplice. Now you've got fishing wire across this. Tie it down well and make sure you don't get that drone tied up with the propellers around the fishing line as you'll destroy it. And then you can use that to pull a nylon wire across uh, paracord or something like that. Paracord stretches, by the way. So you might go with a small cord that does not stretch. Uh, someone who makes rope for amateur radio antennas is Mastrant. And you can look up this on DX Engineering. The kind that I use to hold up my antennas is only one eighth inch thick and it will take up to 600 pounds of weight. So you could do that or you can always do something a little bit bigger if you want to. Now the wire that you should use since you don't want this to sag a lot is going to be 14 stranded single wire. It comes in gray which is nice. Uh, you can string it across here. Another thing you might do if some paraglider comes down the canyon they can hit that wire and it can cause a fatal accident. And unless you mark that antenna in some very visible way, you could be responsible for that fatal accident, okay? So, because people can fly down these, and they do, okay? So you could put it orange. Another thing you can do is write and tell the FAA what you're doing. Because at this point, right here, if it's more than 200 feet from here to here, you have to notify the FAA and they will put something on the charts that says that there's a hazard there. Right here, see how this is marked? There's a tower right there, a tower. So if you are flying, you've got a warning on your chart that there's a tower there, okay? 
and in lots of other places like this is Farmington right here you're going to get radio towers around it and you see this right here with these little electrical pylons that tells you that there's something there to be aware of if your ravine happens to be in a spot where it's going to be more than 200 feet from top to bottom you must inform the FAA and as good practice even if it isn't quite 200 feet across there you will let somebody know let the local paramotoring and model aircraft uh, people know that you're stringing something across that now what's going to happen to your signal well your signal is going to go out just fine at lower frequencies like 80 meters you could actually string it down in the ravine and it would still go out so anyway there's there's your idea whatever your uh, length is which would be 132 feet right there plus some rope to get it over to the other tree all right and put an orange flag or something on that thing so people flying down there either with their drones with their paramotors or something like that will not snag that because yes they can not all that far from our home is norwood canyon uh, which takes you up to norwood hill and then up to norwood and it's a steep canyon and there's some electrical lines that go across there long stretch and they've got these big i guess they're about this big orange globes stuck to them so that airplanes can see them because airplanes do get tempted they love to fly down gorges and stuff like that because it's quite a spectacular view i remember my first trip up provo canyon many many years ago when i was at byu uh, quite a sight scared the living daylights out of me but fortunately the pilot knew what he was doing but the idea is that you're sharing airspace with aircraft and if you've got something across the ravine that some paraglider or parachuter or somebody like that could come with it may be that as soon as the parachute cord hits that antenna that the wing will go over like this before it has a chance to break your antenna so uh, just be careful of that this is why it's written into the FCC rules part 97 that if your antenna is going to be higher than 200 feet above ground level which is at the bottom of the ravine you have to notify the FCC and you may have to wait for their approval until such time as they can get it on the navigational maps but otherwise will the antenna work yes absolutely it'll work just fine so there you have it now I want to tell you just a little special that we're running here if you become a patron of this channel at patreon.com slash ke0og see the link below right after you join up we'll send you a two dollar bill as a thank you and these are kind of rare but they're legal tender if you are in Europe and you want to join two and it's more than two US dollars we'll send you one there too so there you have it until we next meet 73